It didn't took it much to actually figure it out. It was all easy. Now I'm actually getting a feel of how to work in the code spaces and stuff. All I had to do is my database uh, or the URL visibility of the code space was private. I clicked on it, changed the visibility uh, to simply public. That's it. That's all it took to actually uh, figure it out. Now I'm sending a request, although the URL is really, really long. Uh, maybe I can put it into a variable. That would be better. So if I can copy this and can see that how can we actually create an environment variable or something like that. I am new to this uh, style. I think I'm sure there is a way of how we can create a variables uh, out of it. Should I figure it out already? Uh, but let's just say, let's just say, so there's a collection environment variable, uh, new environment. Yeah, maybe. New environment for auth. Yeah, that's good. And inside this we can, yeah, this is, this is good. And environment variable name. Yeah. So URL, paste this one. Yeah, that is link to env file. Not really. And save this. Now probably I can make another request, a new request and can have the variable. What should be the way to call the variables? Uh, probably same URL, just like we used to do in Postman. Ah, fantastic. Register. And now if I send a request, it says uh, cannot get. Obviously, we didn't set a get route onto this one. Uh, post all fields are compulsory. Fantastic. Love this URL. And now we can have a body. Let's try it. Make uh, send a proper request. So we'll just say first name. And that would be, let's just say I register for Hitesh. And then we can have a simple last name. And this can be my last name. Then I think the next one is email. That one would be Hitesh at, ah, why not github.com? I don't have this email, but still, uh, that's good. And there we go. And the last one is going to be password. And I won't be using a secure password. I'll just say uh, HC123456. Yeah, seems decent enough. Let's send this one. And it's taking its time, which is good because it's making a response to database, although our application is not really the fastest in the world as of now. Uh, still, I will give it a benefit of doubt that it's working maybe. Uh, let's see what is happening if still it is able to process this. Probably I need to use some magic video editing here. Uh, let's do this. Magic video editing. All right, so something happened behind the scene as well. The request was taking too much long and I'll show you the reason. There was nothing wrong in the code part actually what was wrong in that. Uh, since I'm actually keep on creating these new users for every single tutorial, this database access, when I clicked on this, there was a user, but it ha it didn't have any access to manipulate any resource. I had to click on edit, go up here and select a built-in role. So I selected click up here and I had to select this read and write to any database. You can read and write to particular one database, but this is just a test account. I don't use it for much and have to update the user. Once I did this, then obviously my database was able to, my user was able to access this database. Once I did this, uh, now we got the first name, last name, email, the token was created and I was able to retrieve the underscore ID, which is a default field of MongoDB, which is a proof that yes, not only we have reached here, but actually there should be something inside the database and whatever the name of the database you gave it up there. So you can browse the collections up here. Obviously I didn't change much into this one. I just called this as test and notice here users, really important. And I have just one document here, which is saying underscore ID and all the data. Notice our password is actually here encrypted. That's a good thing. So we were able to successfully test out that we are able to uh, get this user up and running. Uh, we are able to register that. Uh, we can make another request similar to this and uh, we can try to log in the user as well. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, make a new request. And the same thing will be there. So we'll be just saying, hey, let's go ahead and URL and say uh, login. So we can make a post request and we can borrow some of these material from their copy and we can make a new request to the body. There we go, all the data. We just need the email and password. So just to check whether all the things are properly done or not. So this should be it. Uh, let's try to send a post request on to the same URL. So send this. Success was true, token was there, and notice here, uh, the user object is big this time. This token is not coming up from database. We actually gave it from the local instance that we have. 
And now in the response cookies, notice we are actually having this name token and the cookie is directly present in this one. Uh, maybe you want to send it as an authorization token or something, then add bearer and all these things. So at least by this far, we can understand that we were able to successfully process some data on the database or on the backend, uh, push it into the database and have all of this thing. So this is a fantastic progress, I think. And we were able to do so much of that. So let's go ahead and close all of this. Uh, yep, you can also go away. You can also, no, yeah, you can also go away. There we go. So this also gives all of this. And yes, this was the error. User is not allowed to do the action that helped me to actually debug this process. Rest of the things are going pretty smooth as of now. Okay, all right. One last thing that we would like to do now is actually make a use of this register and login. So we have registered the user, we have logged in the user, but what's the whole point of this one, creating tokens and everything? The simple point is that nobody should be allowed to access some of the routes uh, which are restricted. Obviously, we could make this structure a lot better that we could have moved this async into a controller itself. These routes could be moved into separate, but that's for something where our focus is not on code spaces and just basic uh, authentication, but actually building up a good project. So uh, the reason I have planted the seed in your mind that this could be more organized better, that is the whole idea. This is not the perfect way of, this is how industry works, this is how production grade work. This is more of planting an idea in your head that, hey, everything should be done nicely and all of that. Now, here comes the little bit of the process of one more idea, which is a middleware. So we have already used middleware. We didn't focus much of our attention onto this one, but notice here, the functionality of cookies was not present in the express. I was able to inject this simply because of one reason. I added a middleware. Can I design my own custom middleware? Yes, of course you you can. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out. So what I want to do is I want to use app dot and this could be a get and maybe you're designing a simple dashboard. By the way, one common mistake that a lot of people do is miss this slash. This is really important. So don't miss that. And you have a simple, let's just say a simple request and response. And you want that somebody is getting a message. So res dot send. And I'm able to send uh, something like welcome to uh, dashboard, something like this. Now, right now, there is no one which is stopping me to access this route. For example, I can make a new request and I can just take this one. I can grab my URL, oops, and hit the route of dashboard. And I can make a get request, uh, send this up. I cannot get dash because this code is not being reloaded. Uh, got this, uh, stop this and run this again. And this is all good now. So we should be able to now make a request to the dashboard. And there we go, welcome to dashboard. So right now there is nothing which is stopping me to access this dashboard. Now, there is no need of writing extraordinary code. All you can do is uh, write a simple code here. That's something like uh, grab token from a cookie. Now we can access the cookie. So I can go ahead and do it, grab and go and grab the access from the cookie. So that is the step number one. In fact, let's do this. Uh, and we can check something like this. If no token, then we have to uh, just stop there. If the token is present, then we have to simply say, uh, try to decode that token. Because right now it is encrypted. We use JWT sign decode that token and uh, get ID. So however, we put the token, the ID in that. So notice here, what do we call it up here? Uh, while creating the cookies, notice here, this is how while creating the token, not the cookie, we called it as ID. So grab ID from it. Let's go ahead and do this and get ID. Then after that, uh, query to DB for that user ID. And uh, if we are able to find that user, that means somebody is there in the database, then we al should allow that user to have the database. Now, again, we have, we can monitor furthermore that we need to grab the information of that user from the ID and then send it to the front end that, hey, this is the user. So when you say, welcome, hey, somebody, welcome Hitesh or somebody, display those messages from that user dot first name or something like that. That's whole another story, but how to do this? So first step is to grab the token. So that should be really simple. The tokens are present in request.cookies. And this is a big gigantic object. So you have to grab the token from it. So all you got to do is say that, hey, I would love to extract the token from it. So I'll just say dot token. And I can go ahead and uh, 
just store this into a variable so request uh, dot const dot token there we go and by the way in case you want it is always a good idea to see what's all there in request dot cookies cookies there we go now there are a couple of more ways you can actually directly destructure this in case you don't want to write this probably 100 times so you can destructure that that's also a way again there there are so many ways of how you can do this now if there is no token so just use a simple if statement here that if there is no token we are able to find but again there could be more ways our user might be sending the token so talk to your front end team or mobile team that are you sending me the token or should i expect the token that comes from the cookie uh, maybe as a bearer token depends how you are ex how you are getting that or how you are talking to your front end okay so in that case we'll send uh, simply res.status and we'll say that hey uh, this is a 403 that means you cannot access this you don't have a token so we'll be saying send and we can say please log in log in first or maybe a better message you can go ahead now if the token is present let's go ahead and decode that token now decoding of the token is really super easy uh, decode of the token to decoding of the token happens with the jwt and jwt can actually use a method of verify now notice here verify is really easy you have to send the token uh, in the string format of course and the secret that you have used and that's all it takes it will give you that whether it was successfully decoded or not so I'll just give it a token since I have extracted this token from authorization, request.cookies or wherever I have extracted. And then you have to provide that secret. Again, not a good idea to use the secret like this because notice here, just to make sure that I'm not forgetting it, I have to copy and paste. Again, the better way is to use process.env environment variables. So here I'll just say that, hey, let's go ahead and give it this. So as long as you're giving the same secret, which should be technically stored in the process.env, uh, we will be able to decode this one. Let's store that into a variable. So let's call this one as const decode equals to JWT token. Now, as you decode this, this actually gives you the access of the entire payload that you sent it up. And it's always a good idea to go ahead and log that what we get into the decode. So that's always a good idea, at least when you are learning the things. So once you have decoded this, uh, what we are going to grab is uh, we can actually directly grab an ID from it. But let me tell you what we are doing wrong. Now, let's just say if we are making this like so far, we are doing good. But notice here, this is the dashboard. There might be other page settings page. So every time you have to do this much of the code in all these files, it would be so much better if we can actually take all of this code and move into a separate file and call that separate file and do this process again and again. And even we don't have to do this process, uh, we can do it as a middleware that, hey, before the request comes up, we can check whether this guy is allowed to actually go further or not. And that is where actually the middleware comes up. So let's go ahead and do that. Really easy concept, there is nothing too much. I'll stop this and I'll say that, hey, uh, let's do a directory. Let's call this as middleware or middlewares, whatever you like. And I'll create a simple file into this middleware that will say auth.js. And again, this auth.js has nothing, nothing magical. We just want to access this token and want to proceed on that. Now, so far into this code, there is no dependency except this JWT. So that's all what we'll be doing. So let's go ahead and cut this out. And we'll create a method into this middleware and we'll just move everything here. Now, first and foremost, we need JWT. So we'll say, hey, const, give me a JWT that will come up directly from require. Oops, my bad. Require, there we go. And we'll be saying JSON web token. Now we'll be calling it as method. So const auth. And then we'll be creating a method just like this. So the parameters that are ex expected are request, response. And I'll work on a little bit more. I'll explain you that. Just first of all, this is the default. And we can paste this code entirely. So we have to do nothing. Let's export this auth just like we do regularly. So we're going to go ahead and say module.exports. And we'll be saying auth. All right. So one thing we have done so far is there is nothing magical in this code. So far, this is a basic code. And it cannot be called as a middleware. Now, if you want to make any code as a middleware so that you don't have to call it again and again, and you can call this just here, yes, you can do that. We have actually a third parameter, which we have never discussed. We call this request and response. There is also a third parameter, which is known as next. 
Now, the problem with the next or the feature of the next is if you have to use it, you have to pass it on. It's like a relay in the race. If you have picked it up, you have to pass it on somebody else. Now, we don't call it here because this is the final end of the response. There could be more thing in between that happens. Maybe you want to check uh, check for login. So something like that that happens before we do any processing or send any welcome response. Or we can do check if admin. So there could be a more lot of things that you can go ahead and do and process in between. So if you want to process in between these things, then you have to compulsorily use next so that chain can follow and can be transferred to the next guy. So that's why we actually go ahead and do this. Now, so far we didn't needed it, so we didn't use it. But in the case of auth, maybe there are more of these such middleware. So we can go ahead and use a next. And I told you next is like a, a battalion that you have to a baton, what do you call this, in the relay race. So it's a relay, so you have to pass it on. No matter what happens into this one, you always have to go ahead and pass it on at the very end. So we have to say return next, or just you can say next, you don't need to write return, <laughs> that's safety. Uh, so you can just next. Now what we'll do, this will pass on the chain that wherever you use it, it will just pass on. So for example, you have used auth here, and maybe uh, something like is admin, is admin, there you go. It automatically knows that, hey, once I'm done executing my code, I'll pass on the working flow to somebody else. This could be here or this could be here, whoever is coming between. So we can actually go ahead and do this. Now we have injected the middleware. We haven't actually imported this up here. So let's go ahead and import this just like a regular file. We'll say auth. There we go. Yeah, it's a shortcut way of importing the files. You just write it, it automatically imports it, and now I can actually go ahead and use it. Okay, so far the code is okay-ish, but it's not gonna work or cut through because we have actually got this decoded token, but now uh, there is a high chance that when you are actually decoding things, it might fail uh, because obviously there are a lot of reasons, processing and all that. It's always safe to do these two operations, the decoding and query to the database into a try-catch block. So let's go ahead and cut this out and try to have a simple try-catch. Error, obviously we'll say a console log and we'll say console log, come on. There we go and we'll say error. Now here is the interesting thing, in case there is an error, that means the, the decoding of the token didn't happen perfectly. So this is the one step that we are doing up here. So this is really, really important for us. All right. So uh, token didn't got extracted nicely, but no matter what happens, we'll reach to this part of the code and we'll just uh, dump it down here or we can send a response. So we can say res.send. Again, depends on what your flow is. We have to do a status. Talking and typing, not easy. Res status and we can go ahead and work on with the status which is going to be 401 in this case you don't have an access to the token uh, so we'll send a response something like invalid invalid token so this entire tutorial is not a walkthrough of how to build a project but rather how to understand the code uh, so that's why somewhere i'm sending these strings somewhere i'm sending uh, these JSON tokens. So there is no standardization I've done since I've planted that seed now that you know that there should be some standardization being done. Now, one thing I would like to mention here is we have an access to this request. We added a middleware and then we had an access to something known as request.cookies, which we didn't have in the past. Now, what I can do in additional, I can actually append this because it's a big object. I can add as many fields. I can go ahead and say request.hitesh and that field will be added up here. So, I would like to add a field request.user and I would like to set this decode value. So if somebody has passed on through this middleware, now has an access to new field, just like request.cookies has an access of request.user. And whatever the decoded values are there, he will be able to access that. How cool is that? And we were able to grab all these cookies from request.cookies. Cool, really, really cool. Now, if somebody gets a hits of this access, now we have a request.cookies a request.user and can have all the values. How fantastic and how cool is that? If we were able to do this successfully, let's go ahead and try this out. So let's go ahead and send this dashboard and it's processing because we actually didn't work on that, so my bad. Uh, let's go ahead and run this file first, npm start. And there we go. Just after running this file, we were able to grab this token and the ID. Notice this is all what we were able to decode. This all things come as a decoded user. So this is really, really fun and fantastic one. 
Now, you can come up here and can dump down a little bit more. So let's just go ahead and log that, hey, now can I get access to this request.user and see, hey, what all this, my middleware was able to access this. So yeah, here, request.user. Let's go ahead and uh, save this. So we'll be just saving it. Obviously, I have to rerun the database. Should have installed the node mon or something. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out. And we'll send a request again. And notice here, uh, we are dumping down two things. So request in the auth.js, we are dumping down uh, whatever the decode value is. And in the request, in the dashboard, we are dumping down the request.user. So obviously this proves the point that these are exactly same data and I have access to request.user. I'm also dumping down the token from the another part of the file. So now if I have to make another dashboard, something like uh, app.get, and I have to say uh, settings, settings, yeah, that, that's great. And I go ahead and say request response, and I go ahead and do this, and I say res.send, and I say here are your user, oops, user settings. There we go. Now, all I have to do is, first of all, <laughs> restart my server because I didn't use the auto reload or something. I can make a request to this user settings. So I can go ahead and say settings. I can make a settings. There we go. Uh, it says, here are your settings. So anybody can access this. But the moment I go ahead and inject one more parameter here, uh, notice here in the app.js, now only the logged in, if I want that, hey, this route should be accessed by only logged in user. All I have to say is auth, that's it. Then only logged in user will be able to access this. Uh, you will be able to access it right now because you have cookies. And if I go ahead and look for this, notice here in the cookies, we have uh, no cookies right now. Let's go ahead and try this out. So settings, send this. And the response that comes up is here are your settings. There might be some cookies. I want to clear all cookies. I actually cannot remove the cookies also uh, directly from here uh, because these are server set cookies. So I have to create a logout route and have to set the cookies as undefined. So you get the idea how this is all being done. If you can go ahead and try this out, that would be great. So this is really basic. I'm still figuring it out how to work all these things with the new plugin Thunder Client. So you get the idea how this entire code is supposed to run or in the ideal case, it's supposed to run. So you get the idea. Now you can go ahead and work on with the uh, a route, which is a simple logout route. All you have to do is make the cookies undefined. In case you face any problem, try to stack overflow that. So this is all I wanted to show you into this, that how things are actually going to go ahead and work out and run with that. I highly recommend you to uh, take a fork of this repository and try to update this, try to make it more consistent that you have a common method, the controllers are being separate. It would be great exercise to add another route, which would be logout route, which actually uh, clears the server side cookies. And there is more. The goal of this tutorial was really simple. It was not to build a standard approach to website or a, a functionality, but rather to give you a basic idea of how actually code works, what thought process needs to go behind the scene, it was a very beginner focused tutorial, but I hope you have enjoyed this one. And that was the only goal with this tutorial. Now I'm gonna close this code space and I have to go here, code spaces, and I'll just close it down. First, I need to push all of this, otherwise I might have lose all of these things. Uh, so yes, please push all the changes and I'll call it a day. So uh, final code with assignments, assignments. Uh, there we go, I'll just commit it up. And there we go. So all the code is available to you on the same repository. And I can just close the browser tab. How fun it is. I can just close the browser tab. That's so cool. And I'll just say GitHub code spaces and make sure you don't forget to actually close all of this or stop. I don't need it. So I can just delete the entire code space. It's been done. And that's it. Sure you. Entire tutorial was done within the browser. <laughs> Haven't used anything else. So good. So nice to have it. All right. So this is all what I wanted to show you that how these middlewares and everything works. I hope you have enjoyed this. I'll also bundle this entire tutorial in one go so that you can, if you want to watch it in one shot, you can go ahead and do it. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.